Hi again. Welcome to the garage. I'm Pierre. Uh, this time, telescopic gauges. Uh, we'll be uh, seeing how they're done. We'll undo one. You just see how they're, you know, the inside of it. We'll see how to use it, and uh, we'll get to, you know to compare a few units. Uh, the space between those two uh, pins here is unknown until you measure it with something else. So this is not a direct reading tool, it's an indirect reading tool because there's nothing on there that will tell you what it, what it is. So we need to use a micrometer. A uh, micrometer is a direct reading tool because between the two anvils there you can directly read on the thimble there what the distance is. Uh, just let's go, uh, let's go on. We'll see, uh, we'll see how it turns out. Okay, before we go any further in um, you know, uh, using them or uh, see how it works and everything, we'll undo one. And uh, this is this is a Asimeto. It's a brand that's not the very high class brand, but uh, you know that's okay. That's an okay. Uh, that's an okay tool. But uh, you got better. You got better tools than that. If you go into the uh, you know Starit or uh, Mititoyo or uh, other other types of uh, tools like that. Okay, uh, the tightening uh, screw, the handle. And let's throw out the uh, little retaining pin in there, spring, the body, and each side of the body will be able to uh, pull out the uh, telescoping parts. And here we're having the spring, oops, the spring that goes into the middle of it, and then the body. Uh, the way it works, um, we got here one of the telescoping part. And the other one, you see one with a partial groove in it. I think, yeah, we see that pretty good. And one with a, uh, groove, a total groove in it. And they go over each other like this. That little pin, one in the body, this little pin will get into the, the two corresponding grooves and tighten this up though, um, in a way to uh, stop it from from moving and once you get into the uh, part to measure it will just collapse them a little bit and keep it there so you can have time to take your measure before they uh, you know they move out of place so that's uh, pretty easy that's why they're made pretty simple uh, let's now reassemble this put this open into this spring uh, there's one end they will go one end they won't go this this is the end that goes in Throw the uh, spring and the pin in there. The other half. Uh, not to worry about uh, the orientation yet. If you put it closer, it's better, but it uh, doesn't have to be. And you put this little uh, pin, the smaller end, towards the uh, telescoping places. Sorry, this one goes this way. You put a little bit of pressure on this. Uh, start turning the big, the bigger one first till it engages. S turning the smaller one too, s it will engage. Then doesn't undo anymore. Tie this up. Tight enough. There you go. This long pin with the uh, top screw and. It works. Before we ever make uh, precise measurements with a tool, it has to be calibrated. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have a calibrated set of uh, <coughs> pins for the uh, micrometer set. So the two inch uh, unit here is calibrated to, I mean, sharp on two inches. So let's calibrate the uh, micrometer itself to uh, make sure we're starting to work with the uh, Decent calibration. I think this is close enough. And let's go with the measurements now. Let's now proceed with the proper method of using a telescopic gauge. It probably uh, has in memory the uh, last measurement you made, so you use the top screw there to release the uh, telescopic pins. <coughs> Make sure they operate freely in and out, introduce the tool into the uh, the bore, 
Um, usually I try to center the body uh, on the pins, just probably personal, personal preference. Rocking the handle in that direction, so this pin is high and this pin is low in the bore. I'm going to make it perpendicular with the axis of the bore for the, the coming out after. Tying up the uh, screw on the top, not so little that the uh, pins will come out by themselves, pushed by the spring, and not so much that it becomes almost impossible to pull it out of the bore. And holding this one so it doesn't come out first, because the lower one has to get out, get out there, and it will keep in memory the lowest position it got. So we'll be pushing the handle in this direction. Rocking it a little bit will help ensure that the uh, tool will center itself in the bore. Only once, if you missed it, you release and start again. You do not go and redo it you know, like uh, under pressure. Uh, it, it will give you a, a pretty false reading. Lower, uh, lower anvil with the uh, lower spherical part. Hold it there as much as center as you can. Then you approach the top spherical part with the uh, upper uh, upper anvil. Try to get as close as possible to the feeling you got when you uh, got it out of the uh, bore, which this feels good without pushing the pins in naturally. Uh, this is 953 and let's read the vernier scale on this now. Uh, and it's two tenths above. So we're reading two tenths above this reading there. That is generally a pretty close reading. Normally, uh, if you want something precise, you're going at least double your readings two to three times before you know, concluding that you're right. So, releasing again, same procedure again, rocking the handle this way, centering the body on the tool. Oops, a little bit too tight, that's okay. Centering the body on the tool perpendicular to the exit, tighten this up, holding this, rocking the, uh, the tool on its way out. And remeasuring again, and let's see what uh, what we're getting this time. Oops. Yeah, feeling's good. We're getting for the second time. We're reading nine fifty three plus on the vernier scale and two tenths, uh, which is good. We're repeating ourselves. We're a little bit, you know, you know, above, like two tenths above this uh, nominal reading, but I consider this to be pretty exact. Uh, this is an interpretation tool. It's not a direct reading tool. It's like uh, not getting the measurement directly on this. So the tool itself, the operator, the micrometer might introduce small errors. The more steps you do to get to a final measurement, the more error you introduce. So take that into account when you measure your stuff. And you really need to practice to get repeatability on this and accurate measurement. And uh, that's just like if we're kind of proofing yourselves uh, maybe right or wrong or seeing about is there any difference between the Minty Toyo and the, this one is the uh, Aldac brand. It's made in England. It's a very high quality set too. Not very much a new set, but uh, still in very good shape. Uh, same thing, same principle. We release the uh, telescopic pins introduced into the bore. I'm trying to center the tool as much as I can better. Uh, tighten up the, the, sc the screw on the top holding this so it doesn't come out, wiggling the tool, rocking in the front, and let's take a measurement about this one too. Oops, open up a little bit, and let's approach slowly, try to get the same feeling we got on the way out. Uh, yeah, this feels good. 
and we are getting 953 and let's see about the vernier scale and we're getting 953.2 again it's close enough so we're repeating from one brand to the other and let's see about the cheaper one the Asimeto Asimeto brand which is the uh, kind of a Mitutoyo wannabe same thing release the uh, screw on the top introduce the tool set up center the body on the anvils tighten up the screw rocking forward you know with a little wiggle on the side and let's take a measurement let's open up a little bit okay let's see how we get What do we get with this? A little bit more. I think we're fine. Looks good. This is given me 953 and I think we're getting four tenths. So we're two tenths above the uh, nominal measurement and the, the uh, two other tools were two tenths above. Uh, let's see if that repeats again. When you get this, this discrepancy between readings, there it's time to uh, do multiple uh, multiple measurement and comparing. Uh, the same procedure again. Let's hold this, wi rock forward, wiggle out a little bit, and uh, measure again. Okay. Okay. Oh boy. This one, I can tell you, I just it's it gives me a different feel from the other ones, and I'll show you why right after. Okay. It's nine fifty three again, and uh, where is the? Uh, Okay, this time it gives me three tenths. We're repeating within a tenth of a thousand. Uh, let's uh, let's see the difference between this is a Mititoyo and this is a wannabe a Simeto. And uh, okay, maybe this way. Check the uh, the ends. Uh, this one is much more spherical than this one. I think that might have something to do with the feeling we get when we touch. Uh, yeah, we see it pretty good there. Both ends are the uh, both ends are the same. Smaller radius on the uh, asymmetro, as in many tools, quality and price are uh, you know sometimes going together. Uh, this is Asimeto. It's more like a wannabe uh, Mitutoyo, which like compared to this one here. We see the treading, the knurling, the size of the pin there, the size of the handle. Uh, compared to this is the Mitutoyo here. Uh, you see everything is smaller, not exactly as well done, not as exactly as carefully done. This set will set you back by uh, about uh, thirty-five to forty-five dollars or something. A uh, set of Mitutoyo will set you like uh, between one hundred fifteen and two hundred bucks. So I would say this does an okay tool. This is a much better tool. Uh, good quality, top quality tools again, like this is an Aldac made in England, and this is a Starrett. Uh, I wouldn't compare the size because this is a D size and this is an E size. So uh, I mean, uh, it's just for a finishing comparison. Fine tread, fine tread. Uh, Nerling is good. There, these tools are not very new, but still like uh, in very good shape. Still constructed all the way. Uh, set set of those will uh, you know a set of six will you know set you back maybe uh, at least a few hundred bucks so uh, but they'll last you for I would say a lifetime or almost depending upon the use because these tools will eventually wear a little bit you know there's a saying that uh, you're getting what you pay for unless uh, whenever you buy those tools lots of times they'll come in sets of uh, sets of six 
the sixth one is here. <laughs> and uh, they'll come, you know, lettered in size A, B, C, D, and up to F. And the smaller one will measure from uh, 3 eighths, and the bigger one will measure to 6 inches. Uh, usually the set of six is the most economical set you can get. Uh, I got this little set of Starrett there, which is a little smaller set with four. But uh, quality-wise, I mean, uh, these two sets, top quality, Mitu Toyo, excellent quality too. Uh, Asimedo, more like economical uh, quality, just not super bad. I wor I've seen worse, but, uh, you know, for a budget price, that could, uh, that could be okay. I think we can conclude by saying that the telescopic gauge is a powerful tool, precise tool, in experienced hands. To get experience, you need to practice, practice, and practice, and get the feeling of the tool. One good way to achieve this, get yourself a bore that you know the uh, nominal measure of. Get that measure repeatedly and accurately then you're getting closer to be a pro in measuring. And if you're machining, just uh, you're approaching the uh, final measures, take more than one reading. Two to three readings minimum. Make sure you repeat, make sure you you got the right uh, procedure. And also, uh, if you like this video, please, <laughs> it encourages me. Uh, also, constructive comments, something you like, something you dislike. and. Hey, get on shy one day and talk. I mean, I'm not going to get on your head for that. So till next time, I'm Pierre. See you again.